today we start with the first topic in biology that is reproduction in reproduction we have got to discuss about four parts one is reproduction in organisms in that topic we'll discuss about types of reproduction and some terminologies which are used in the further topics and second topic is reproduction in flowering plants with respect to flowering plants how the reproduction is taking place that we are going to discuss and third topic is human reproduction how the reproduction takes place in the human beings and the last one is human health and diseases today it's time to discuss about in general reproduction in organisms before knowing what is reproduction let us know all these organisms which are leading their life in the universe are having a particular life span let us see what you mean by life span life span is a period between birth and natural death that is a life span is a a period between birth and natural death the duration between the birth and natural death is said to be life span and one thing you remember if a one mark question is asked what is life span life span is a period between birth and death if you say like this is wrong we should use the word natural death life span is a period between birth and natural death <coughs> uh there is uh, the same kind of question like anti pyretic drugs one of our students brought the photocopy and he was mentioning sir i have written the right definition but they have given zero marks for anti pyretic drugs what he wrote is are the drugs which reduce the body temperature only this much he has written it's absolutely wrong what are anti pyretics then no doubt they reduce the body temperature during fever that terminology is necessary they reduce the body temperature during fever that's right in the same way what is life span is a period between birth and natural death if you just write birth and death is not absolutely right we should write is a period between birth and natural death and this life span you know it is not similar in all the organisms it varies from organism to organism in some organisms like microorganisms life span in is of few days even it goes up to 1000 years few days to 1000 years as span and even this life span is not correlated with the size of an organism it is not at all correlated with size of an organism take for example there are two birds crow and parrot 
they are having more or less same size but the lifespan differs crow is having lifespan of 15 years and parrot 140 years as well and mango and peaful tree aralimara they are having more or less the same size but the mango is having short lifespan as compared to peaful tree it means lifespan is not at all correlated with their size and then in each and every organism they are having their own particular lifespan whatever may be the duration of lifespan at the end they have to die death is sure no organism is immortal every organism dies every organism dies except single celled organism single celled organism you know they are immortal they don't have natural death those single celled organisms you know they don't have natural death they are destroyed they don't die by themselves by natural death they are immortal but almost all the organisms are mortal as well Mor mortality death natality birth like that no organism is immortal every organism is mortal and even in single cell organisms you know even the interesting modifications manipulations they do have whenever the conditions are unfavorable take for example the bacteria whenever the conditions are favorable it reproduces by binary fission if the conditions are unfavorable around the cell wall a thick wall is formed and that thick wall is made up of dipicolinic acid dipicolinic acid and the inner content is survived when the conditions become favorable the inner content becomes 2 to 4 endospores and that uh, thick wall will be broken those endospores are released and those released endospores become daughter bacteria as well so that it survived under unfavorable condition in case of protozoans a cyst formation takes place in case of uh, uh, blue green algae like uh, nostrac there is a a food storing cell a kinate is there they are all perinatal structures they are all perinatal structures remember all the organisms are mortal but single cell organisms are immortal because they don't have natural death that's all and now these organisms with different lifespan are survived and their progeny is continued their progeny is continued by a biological phenomenon that biological phenomenon is reproduction reproduction what is reproduction reproduction is a biological process where the organism gives rise to young ones means offsprings which are similar to itself they are 
similar to their own kinds. Reproduction is a biological process by which the organism gives rise to young ones of its own kind. Almost all those young ones are similar to their parent organism. That is said to be reproduction. That is said to be reproduction. It gives the offsprings of its own kind. And those offsprings, young ones, they grow, mature, in their own turn, they produce young ones. By this, you know, there is a continuity of their progeny, generation after generation. And they do have the life cycle like birth, growth, and death. The life cycle of each and every organism is having birth, growth, and death. And the reproduction, you know, which kind of reproduction is taking place in all these organisms. There is a diversity in organism and organisms do have different mechanism of multiplication. They do have different mechanism of multiplication. Uh, take for example their mode of reproduction you know it depends upon the habitat internal physiology and many other factors based on their habitat and internal physiology and other factors they do have a particular type of reproduction there are two types of reproductions what is a sexual reproduction second one is sexual reproduction or sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction or sexual reproduction is one where offsprings are produced by single parent offsprings are produced by single parent with or without involvement of gamete formation with or without involvement of gamete formation that is asexual reproduction the young ones or offsprings are produced by a single parent with or without involvement of gamete formation hence asexual reproduction is otherwise said to be uniparental inheritance unique parental inheritance is well because single parent is involved in reproduction and second one is sexual reproduction here young ones are produced by the participation of two parents of opposite sex it means the participation of male and female parents to produce young ones with the formation and fusion of gametes. Here gametes will be formed and the gametes will get fused. And there is a partition of participation of two parents, both male and female parents. For asexual reproduction, as single parent is involved, we have mentioned it as 
uniparental inheritance. In sexual reproduction, there is an involvement of two parents so that this sexual reproduction is also named as biparental inheritance. Biparental inheritance. In uh, asexual reproduction, only the involvement of single parent as well, with or without formation of gametes, and is also named as uniparental inheritance. And a sexual reproduction, where there is a participation of two parents of opposite sex, and here gamete formation and gamete fusion are involved and it's time to discuss first about asexual reproduction and uh, I have just mentioned a type of reproduction depends upon habitat of the organism and their internal physiology and many other factors habitat means a natural abode of the plant and habit means the nature of the plant as well and now let us discuss about asexual reproduction You know the definition is a process where single parent is involved with or without formation of gametes. It is taking place usually in unicellular organisms. unicellular organisms. In unicellular organisms, we do find asexual reproduction. Uh, Monerans and protistamines, where asexual reproduction is there. Take for example, a moneran member like bacteria and a protista members like uh, protozoans like amoeba and paramecium, they reproduce by binary fission. By binary fission. In monera member like bacteria and protozoans like amoeba and paramecium. They reproduce by binary fission. It's a very common type of reproduction in bacteria, amoeba and paramecium. And here a single parent is involved. That's why binary fission is an asexual reproduction. And in the similar way, bird formation in East, a Saccharomyces cerevisiae, East, a fungi, is a unicellular fungi. Here what happens is, a unequal size and outgrowth is formed. And the content of that main cell divides and enters into that, leading to the formation of a bud. And the bud formation takes place one after the other there will be a pseudo mycelium is formed a false mycelium is formed and those buds when they detach they become a new offspring so that bud formation is a sexual reproduction in the east and the next is juice for Formation. 
एग्जाम्पल एनी सेल्युलर अलगी लाइक थमेडोमेनस हियर द इनर कंटेंट स्प्लिट्स इनटू मेनी मूवेबल स्पोर्स जूस स्पोर्स and they give rise to new tenodomeres here also single parent is involved and the next is budding in a, a multicellular organism like hydra where budding it is multicellular one uh at lateral side some buds will form just like in plants here also buds will form when they detach they become new hydra and in hydra inner sexual reproduction is budding genules in case of sponges a multicellular organism like sponges where a multicellular structures named gemmules are formed and these gemmules when they detach they give rise to new sponge new sponges and the next is conidia example Penicillium, if fungi, penicillium, where uh, it is having branches like fingers, at the end of those fingers there will be spores named conidia. From those conidia, the young ones will produce conidia formation. The example for that is. pencilium and uh, concerned to pencilium there may be a general biomarkers pencilium is a fungi from which a antibiotic penicillin is prepared and uh, penicillin a antibiotic you are knowing is the first ever discovered antibiotic penicillin is the first ever discovered antibiotic even you must know one more thing about this is a universal antibiotic it is used for almost all the diseases and this penicillin is extracted from penicillium notatum by alexander fleming with respect to that penicillin we know all these things it was discovered by alexander fleming and penicillin is extracted from penicillium notatum and penicillin is a first ever discovered antibiotic and even penicillin is a universal antibiotic even though we know all these things once in need the question was asked very simple question and whatever the important things i have told about penicillin they were there in the question form only but they were asked about other thing penicillin was extracted from penicillium notatum by alexander fleming that penicillium notatum belongs to was the question remember they didn't ask penicillin is a universal antibiotic is a first ever discovered antibiotic it was extracted from penicillium notatum was extracted by alexander fleming no they didn't ask those things they have asked that penicillium notatum is 
virus, bacteria, fungi, algae. Very simple thing. We should know because we are knowing many important things, but these minor things we may forget. That is fungi. So far, we have discussed about what is lifespan and it is not correlated with the size of an organism. <coughs> Even we have discussed no organism is immortal but single celled organisms are immortal. Even we have discussed about <coughs> what is reproduction and types of reproduction. Among them, asexual reproduction and other types. Concern to this, they may ask it. In uh, binary fission, is asexual reproduction examples. In the similar way, bud formation, yeast, juice spore formation, chlamydomyelis, budding, that is in case of hydra, gemmule formation <coughs> in sponges. Remember, once in animal exam the question was asked in the sponges what are the asexual structures that is gametes and now conidia formation that is in MCD. let us see even asexual reproduction takes place in plant cells asexual reproduction takes place in plants but it is differently named. In plants, you know, the asexual reproduction is said to be vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction. Even in plants, asexual reproduction takes place. But it's differently named as a vegetative reproach. Even in plants, a single parent is involved in reproach. That's why it's a sexual reproach. And it's differently named as a vegetative reproduction because a vegetative part of a plant like uh, in some plants in root, in some other plants stem, even the leaves, they are involved in the reproduction, propagation, production of animals, propagation. That's why it is said to be vegetative reproduction. It is said to be vegetative reproduction because the vegetative part of a plant body is used for the reproduction. And this vegetative propagation is said to be, uh, it is asexual reproduction because a single parent is involved. Let us see some of types of vegetative propagation or reproduction in the plants. Runner. Example. <coughs> Oxalis. Runner is a subvarial stem modification. This is meant for vestige of propagation. See here. At nodal region, it gives roots below and leaves above, and internal obliquely grows upward and bend downward. And at nodal region, it touches the ground, roots below, and leaves above. It grows like this only continuously in all the direction it grows in all the direction here the internode 
it is obliquely grown upward and bend downward. And this is said to be rudder. For propagation, you know, what we have got to do is this runner is cut so that we do have three young ones and these are used for propagation, multiplication, reproduction. This is a vegetative reproduction in oxalis. Where nodal region roots are developed below and leaves above, but the internal grows obliquely upward and bend downward and rooted at nodal region as well. If we cut that inner node, which is said to be runner, we do say we do get seedlings, young ones for the stage of propagation. And second one is offset. Example water hysia. There will be no much difference between runner and offset. It is a sub aerial plant. It grows on the soil surface. But uh, water hysia, you know, it grows on the water surface, is aquatic plant. And here also at nodal region, <coughs> it gives uh, roots below and leaves above. The internode is short and it grows straight, but here it grows obliquely upward and bend downward. It grows straight and it gives out roots below, leaves above in all the direction. It grows in all the direction and this is opposite. And if it is cut, they become many seedlings. They are meant for vestigial propagation. And this uh, water hysian, you know, is considered as a terror of Bengal. Because this plant was brought from abroad because of its beautiful flowers and uh, large leaves and they are planted in ponds it is having such a rapid growth you know within short period of time the total ponds were covered by water hysia and they started making use of a dissolved oxygen from the pond it affects the life of aquatic organisms like fishes. That's why it is said to be terror of Bengal. And in this water hysia, you know, a restrictive propagation is offset. And now, So, in case of zinzir, turmeric, zinzir and turmeric, rhizome is an underground stem modification. You may have seen in turmeric. It is, if you see that raw turmeric, you could notice nodes and internodes. They are branched like fingers. At nodal region, you know, we can notice a colorless papery leaf. Even small buds are also there at nodal region. And that is for vestigial propagation. That is for vestigial propagation. That is rhizome. And one more interesting thing about turmeric is that Turmeric is a biennial plant. It means it needs two years 
to complete its life cycle. But as far as we are up to that underground turmeric, we harvest after eight months old. But during eight months, we don't find the flowers. Once the flowers appear and become the fruits, life cycle ends. But we do premature harvesting because we are after a turmeric for the purpose of food. But it is an example for biennial herb. If you won't harvest it, the above leaves will turn yellow and die. But the underground turmeric will remain with reserved food from which another shoot will develop. That gives flowers after 18 months. But uh, uh, so far we didn't see the flowers of turmeric because we do harvesting at 8 months old. And remember, is a rare example for biennial plants. Which of the following plant is biennial plant? Biennial plant means it completes its life, its life cycle within 2 years. That is none other than turmeric. And that underground branch with the storage of food, nodes and internodes are there. And even a scaly, papery leaf is there, which is colorless. And even birds are also developed at nodal age. And next one is leaf buds. This is there in case of Bryophyll. 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 A thick leaf. We do find a buds at its margin. Its vestige of propagation is very interesting. <coughs> For that, you know, we have to use the leaf. The margin of that leaf is provided with buds. If we cut the leaf and plant it in the soil, from those buds, new plants will develop. New plants will develop. That is leaf buds. That is leaf itself is meant for vestigial propagation. That is in case of bryophyll. Tuber, example, potato, potato, you know, is a underground stem, it is an underground stem modification, the potato part which we are using is a stem only, if you observe that stem, that potato tuber you would find here and there some sunken areas those sunken areas are commonly named as eyes where you would find small nodes or buds those eyes are nothing but nodes only nodal regions only where we do find small buds for its restrictive propagation you know we have to cut that potato into small pieces and buried in the soil, they give rise to new young plants. A single plant is used here for the reproduction. In the similar way, Balpiri is a multicellular structure de developed in case of again is a Vestigio propagu and sucker. Example Amaranthus. Amaranthus plant, you know, the main plants with leaves. This is soil surface. And part of it is 
uh, a part of stem is aerial and part of stem is underground weak roots as well from this un underground stem the branches are developed on either side and these are nothing but suckers how its multiplication takes place reproduction takes place well to cut these branches they become new plants they become new plants as well and it is about the vestige of propagation and a runner offset rhizome leaf buds tuber bulbil sucker they are all said to be vegetative propagules vegetative propagules vegetative propagules means those are the vegetative structures mainly meant for propagation or reproduction propagation or reproduction and they may ask which is a vestige of propagule in all cells runner and the vestige of propagule in what are his here oxets gingiva and turmeric rhizome bryophyllum leaf buds potato tuber again bulbi and amaranthus sucker this is about the vestige of propagation and remember all sexual reproduction is a common type of reproduction in uh, unicellular organisms come under kingdom monera as well as kingdom protista and even some higher plants also we do find all sexual reproduction uh, in the higher uh, in the plants some unicellular algae and fungi all sexual reproduction is there sometimes you know when the adverse adverse condition comes in those organisms sexual reproduction starts and remember in those lower plants the sexual reproduction comes to survive the plant as well in case the sexual reproduction is facing adverse condition it never die it enters into sexual reproduction so that it survives sometimes sexual reproduction survives those plants as well and uh, those higher plants where we do find both asexual and sexual reproduction but as far as animals are concerned in most of the animals one and the only type of reproduction that is sexual reproduction in all unicellular organisms asexual reproduction in the plants both asexual and sexual reproduction higher plants only sexual reproduction and most of the animals you know only sexual reproduction is must we'll discuss about sexual reproduction now